what the banking families have done, especially in the last 70 years, is they have abandoned their own foundation. They have abandoned the principle of the treasury of heaven. And so when we speak of the treasury of one heaven, we have now claimed that as, as our administration and we have also claimed and consumed the treasury of heaven as being a part of the treasury of one heaven. Um, I see a couple more questions on, so let me just get to them. I'll get to truth that matters to me. Hello. Can you hear us? Yeah, hi, Frank. It's Greg. Hi, Greg. Hi. I have a speakerphone on there. I um, sure. well appreciate everything you've shared tonight and follow up of our last few discussions. I, uh, Ron, Ron has worked on completing um, a sample of um, assignment of a, an agent and then also worked on a warrant that we're going to file tomorrow. And I guess we, we can make available those to people <laughs> once we've used them successfully. I guess I don't want anybody to be trying something that we, I haven't tried myself first. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so um, the plan tomorrow is is to get um, the proper um, deed or whatever we're going to end up calling it on notice for our friend uh, to list at the county north of us um, as his as him being a general executor, and then take that along with the uh, notice of me being the administrator or an agent for his I should say agent for his matter on the court hearing. And file that into the court case, and then go in with a, a warrant that he would sign, as with his first name and the letter R, um, with me to have my authority then to operate on Friday. So it'll be the first test, and I'll, uh, we'll, we'll let you know everybody know how that goes. So. Well, that's great, Greg. Look, I I really appreciate uh, you letting everyone know about that, and uh, and testing the role of being the ultimately the authorized administrator through the warrant. It's um. It's very exciting because, as you know, uh, we have been deprived of, of any, or well, appearing deprived of any mechanism and how to enter their court other than being shoveled through the attorney channel. Yes? Yes, of course. And no assistance. We've not been able to go in there with assistance. You don't know how many times I've been thrown out of, uh, out of the bar going in to try to help friends. <laughs> yes. And... and um, just on, on, so yes, we need to test it. In fact, there's a lot of people who have attempted it, um, including a couple of friends of mine who've claimed they've gotten in, but they really were never able to accomplish anything uh, for the other people. Um, other than in, in a couple of cases, one one friend of ours in Texas got um, the the court to um, offer a new uh, trial after people were uh, uh, convicted without having his testimony. But again, I don't even know what the outcome was with that one right now. But, but most of it has just been has been uh, nowhere. And in fact, what you shared tonight um, with the judge being a private contractor, with his name being the marquee of his being off of offering it, it, it fits exactly with a, a buddy of Ron's and mine, and and um, some of our others have known know him. He he went into court with a case that he started, and uh, kept asking for different judges, and he did a different judge, and he. He, he really never got exactly what he wanted, but he could assign it to whichever judge would be willing to take the case. It was so. So it does appear that that's an exact correct assessment that the judge is um, acting as the um, as an independent contractor that that's either being assigned the case when we don't assign it, or if somebody does bring an action and assign it to a specific judge, he he'll take the case, but it's still being brought under their rules. Uh, nobody that I've ever been with has ever successfully asserted their position or his or her position of, 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 of general executor or anything for that matter. Um, well, it, it, it raises a thing that I, I actually didn't get into the call tonight. I did it last time, but I, I want to do it again. We know we spoke about standing. Mm -hmm. How many times have you heard the word standing, Greg? Oh, over and over and over again, <laughs> repeatedly. And, and the judge looks at you and says, you have no standing. It's one of the stock, stock answers, isn't it? Absolutely, yes. So now we know what standing means, don't we? We now know ultimately what standing means. If probate court is not the, just the proving of the will, it is the proving of a claim against the estate. Yeah? Yes. 
if if a probate is proving the claim against the estate, then unless you are appointed a position of the administration of the estate or you are the bringer of a claim, you have no standing, do you? No, no, that's that's happened to all of us repeatedly. Yes, we've we've had no. So now, but how frustrating has it been for all this time that that ultimately it's that simple? Either you are bringing the claim, in which case because you are the claimant, you have standing in the particular matter, or you are appointed a position of the estate. And if you're not one of those, hey, you're invisible. So now finally we have standing. Yeah. Yes, Ron has experienced that with his uh, federal court of claims case where he went in originally not as a general executor, tried to make the switch in standing, and had none. And literally, I believe, as we've dis uh, discussed, would need to withdraw that case altogether. And if we ever were to bring another one in, once he closes the other one out, it would go in directly with standing the first time. You can't change your position of having no standing in something to all of a sudden have standing, especially when you're the plaintiff. Well, it's great times, and, and I want to commend you and, and everyone who uh, are showing competence, discernment, but also the, the, the fortitude to test for the benefit of others. And I think this goes to the answer, of if things are taking time, they're taking time because we're not simply whipping things up and hoping they work. We are de definitely trying to help people who are, are right in the coalface. And Greg, uh, you're a good man for what you're doing. Thank you. I do this with a bit of trepidation. Um, the the only thing that I would also want to, hopefully John is listening and he'll call in. Um, John uh, was able to yesterday, um, after we were unable to record uh, the estate um, document of his mother's estate into the county recorder, took and actually filed it into the bankruptcy case in the United States uh, Bankruptcy Court, federal, federal court here in the same town. And um, then today took a certified copy of that, went to the same county recorder yesterday that rejected it, and they accepted the filing right off the bat to go into the miscellaneous files. So what they as, as a public record? As a public record in the miscellaneous hey. file. All because it was recorded, <laughs> all because it came out of a court recording. So it appears, as Ron has discovered, and now John has, is that the federal courts at least in the United States, will accept almost anything as a filing into the court case. And from there, because it's got a, a certified federal court stamp on it now, you can take it back to your county and at the very least get it filed into the miscellaneous section. John didn't get it filed into, into the wills section, but got it filed into the miscellaneous. And, of course, then that should then give him some um, uh, legal uh, ammunition then to use um, in any of the state cases where they're trying to take his property or or even be able to assert his position as the executor for the estate with which another attorney made that claim uh, yesterday at the bankruptcy court. So, yeah, this is, a, this is a, an evolving process as we learn. <laughs> good, good. Well, look, um, thanks again, and uh, we'll, we'll talk again. In the, if not on the call, we'll talk um, during the week. Thanks, Greg. Right, great. All right, thank you. Okay. Bye, Frank. Good on you. Yeah, that was uh, fa fantastic. Look, we see I've got Idaho on, so I'm just going to get uh, Idaho on, and then I'll get to some questions here in the in the chat. Hello, Idaho. Can you hear us? Yes, Frank. This is John. Hi, John. Hey, Greg. Just uh, basically let you know what uh, what happened. Yes, uh, I got that, that certified copy from from the court. They wanted the uh, entire document. It was nine pages. Only five pages of, of it was my mom's will, but. Uh, the uh, county recorder, uh, no questions asked. They didn't even read the document. They just scanned it to see that it was a certified document from the United States District Court. And no questions asked. It would go right in the miscellaneous files. I was in and out in less than 90 seconds were before. Uh, we were there about 45 minutes fighting <laughs> for everything. Uh, it was amazing. Well, it, it, I think there's a lot of things in, involved in this. One is uh, whatever we do, um, I, I, I hope we do it from the premise that we've identified the underlying procedures, we minimise any case of embarrassment through lack of knowledge or incompetence of their own people, and that we streamline it as much as possible. So I'm really pleased to hear uh, this took place. It may not be the permanent remedy, it may only be a temporary process before they change something, but the point is... Uh, 
the underlying principles we're saying, which is the, the public record in their system from the mid of last century became the preeminent proof of a legal fact versus perfection of notice or perfection through notorial procedure. This, I think, is the understanding or the recognition or the, com the, the comprehension I hope we all take out of, the, of this recent unfolding of information and that this information used with what we're learning on wills and probate and executor and general executor gives us the ability now to have standing in order to at least now deal with the matter. Before then, as you know, we've been railroaded, haven't we? We've been railroaded throughout their system. Now Absolutely. we have a chance. Yeah? Yes. Good. Just if I could make a quick little, little comment. Uh, a friend of mine invited me to go uh, down to Moscow. It's about 100 miles uh, south of us. Uh, he had a uh, an acquaintance that was actually had appealed a uh, mortgage case about yep. uh, foreclosure to the uh, Idaho Supreme Court, and the Idaho Supreme Court was actually meeting at the University of Idaho at at, uh, at Pullman, and uh, I, I went down there to to, to watch the uh, uh, hearing. I've never been before the Supreme Court before, so that was very interesting. But uh, basically, it was a a done deal. Uh, very good learning experience, but. Uh, uh, from what I have learned here, uh, they they were following the law. He did not have any legal argument. He didn't say that they broke any laws, and but just didn't like what they they said. They listened, and uh, they'll render their verdict in, in 30 days. But uh, it was an interesting experience. I've never seen it before. But uh, glad I learned. Very good. Well, look, all the best with what you're doing, and and keep us abreast and let us know, and uh, we'll keep learning. Absolutely. Thank you, Frank. Keep up the great okay, work. Okay. Good on you. Thank you. See you. Bye. Um, let me answer a couple of quick uh, questions in the chat before we go to the next uh, caller. Uh, the question, uh, uh, Judah asked a question, is, uh, which I can't really see the full extent of it. I'm sorry, Judah, I can't see. Uh, it says, Canons of Ecclesiastical Law, my question relates to portents, omens, prodigies, uh, augury, auspices, prophecy, superstition, and recognition. Okay, I, I didn't see what the actual question is then what she meant. So if you want to punch that in, let me know and I can answer it. Uh, Dean Sandstrom asked the question, uh, what is the Acadia position on payment of taxes to the Romans? Great question. Uh, I'll, I'll give it in three parts and I'll try and do it as, as, as short as possible. One, everyone who is a member of a community is obliged to contribute to the community. Everyone who is a member of the community is obliged in some way to contribute to that community. So that is the underlying principle, maxim of contribution, which is why under Eucadia, as a member, once the communities are established and you are uh, trading, you will be obliged to contribute something to that community. No, none of you, none of us, including me, is excluded from contributing. Two, we do not use the word uh, taxes because we consider taxes a tribute. Uh, it is a tribute of a conquering army. Uh, it is not considered something that is done of free will or done for the benefit. It is done as a extraction, uh, as a taking. And the, three, and the third is, uh, whilst the argument of Roman taxes is that it is a contribution to the community, uh, the reality is, in most cases, uh, it is a form of torture, uh, it is a form of theft, and it is designed on criminalizing all of us. And as such, it does not allow us to contribute to our community fairly because if we admit to being a lawful taxpayer, then effectively we are admitting to uh, someone who commits crime. So we don't openly uh, encourage uh, rebellion against uh, the various tax groups, uh, but we find it, and I find it, extremely difficult to support uh, both the contribution to a society, any society, whether it be the United States of America Corporation, be the Australian Corporation, and still support a system that seeks to treat us as criminals. 
So that's the uh, that's the paradox we're in. So 